with A. Jay Emmicks, who is, I'm really glad to have him here, not just because of the topic, which I'm really glad about, because this is a cool person. Um, we hooked up and had some conversations on the phone, and I can tell we're going to do lots of stuff together. And this guy has, um, I love it when people take a particular skill set in a particular niche, and like I talked with you guys about, going an inch wide and a mile deep, and uh, AJ has gone an inch wide and about 10,000 miles deep into Twitter. And he's going to bring us those strategies today. So, AJ, welcome, sir. Thanks, brother. I'm excited to be here, man. Really excited. So, guys, let's get the party started, man. I mean, we only have about an hour together today, and I want to value your guys' time. And, Jeff, man, thank you again for having me today. And I'm glad that I could carve out some time to share with you guys the proven techniques to use Twitter to grow your business. Now, my outcome for you guys for the day, right? So I like always setting kind of the expectations for when we get into training. So I want to make sure you have the exact three-step process to building a raving fan base of over 10,000 plus people on Twitter, generating more traffic to your website, right? We all need more traffic, ultimately to collect those leads and get more paying clients. Now there's going to be Q&A at the end of the training, and I'm also going to be randomly selecting one of you guys to win a free gift. So you want to make sure you hang around. So here's what we're going to learn today. We're going to learn how to create the raving fan base. So we talked about that. I want to help you find more quality customers and boost your website traffic and grow your email list. So if this sounds good to you guys, just go ahead and type yes into that questions box. Um, we are going to be totally engaging back and forth, just like we do on Twitter here in the questions box. Awesome. So we have Henry, Candy, and Dan, uh, Joan, Danielle, everybody saying yes and sweet. And Taylor. Yes, I love it. Awesome. So everybody's engaged here. So glad you're all here ready to rock. So I'm going to be checking in with you, like I said, throughout the training. So if you were to ask three people closest to me whom I have a deep mutual respect for, what are three values that make me different from the rest of the other social media trainers out there? There's a couple things that they'd say. One of the things is truth. Okay. So what I mean by truth is I don't share some pie in the sky techniques. I'm going to tell you exactly what's working and not working. I'm going to be very real, very raw with you guys. And I'm not going to hold anything back from you. And you're going to experience that here today. The second thing that they'd share with you is justice. Now, many people who sell information and products, they don't care if you ever log into the courses. They just want to sell you another product. I do things a bit different than most trainers because I hold you accountable to actually do the work and not behind hide behind your stories. Now, the last value that they'd share with you is accessibility. If I make a commitment to you and, reach, and you reach out to me and I'm like, hey, man, how do we do this on Twitter? How do we do that? And I made the commitment to help you get results with Twitter, then I'm going to do my best to get back with you within 24 to 48 hours. Now, if you don't know who I am, my name is AJ Amix. I am the Twitter rock star and creator of Tweet Like a Rockstar. So why in the world am I the Twitter rock star? Well, I spent 10 years of my life touring in a rock band that helped co-found called Trade Cities. We had radio play here in Dallas. We had this 38-foot tour bus, and ultimately, we turned down two offers from different record labels. And in the entire process of that career, I learned a ton about marketing and advertising and business. Now, you may be wondering, well, why in the world Twitter? I mean, why not LinkedIn? Why not Instagram? Why not Facebook? Well, in 2013, I could not afford to spend money on Facebook advertising. So I got really resourceful and I started experimenting with Twitter and within about 24 hours, I had generated hundreds of new targeted followers and people began voluntarily joining my email list. And I was collecting leads and within about seven days, I had started up to set up sales calls with all of these interested people. Now, if we fast forward to today, okay, I've created an organic following of over 21,000 people that I've never paid. I've never boosted a post on Twitter before. I mean, I, I have literally, this is all organic. We're going to learn how to, to do, for you guys to do the exact same thing. Now, the cool thing is that's continuing to grow each day. And within about a five-day period, you guys can see here on the screen, this 410,811 number. This is the amount of accounts that I reached just from September 26th to September 30th. So this is just like within the past six days. And this impressions, my friends, is almost close to 800,000 impressions. Now, back in the day prior to social, if we wanted to have impressions on our target market, we would spend money on magazines. We would spend money on radio. We would spend money on television. People still do that. But what we're going to learn today is how to get these exact same results with actually without having to spend that money on paid advertising. Now, I thought maybe that I was special and that these strategies that maybe they just work for me, right? 
So I decided to test these theories and I started teaching some of my friends what I was doing and I was really blown away because it actually was working for them. And people started sending me tweets, right? As I started sharing this stuff on podcasts and different um, free events, like people started tweeting me and here's one from Josh Schmidt. He said, hey, upon implementing your three-step process, he gained 150 new followers. My good friend Tyson Webb with the Go For It podcast. If you never listened for the Go For It podcast, highly recommend it. He said he doubled his follower, uh, his following within a week just by executing what we're going to learn today. Stephen Perry, he commented on something of mine on Facebook telling me that he loves Twitter. He didn't like it before and that his accounts were blowing up. Simon Greener said his strategies are crushing it for his podcast. Chris Rex sent me this tweet talking about how he used to not be a fan of Twitter and now he's gained 400 new followers and he's talking with people all within 48 hours. And then my good friend, Jonathan Heston, he sent me this image on Facebook, right? So you can see this graph here. I, I love images. I love data. We're going to be showing lots of images and data here. You can see this flat line and then you can see kind of this hockey stick. Everybody who executes what we're going to talk about today is going to experience the same hockey stick. And here's the caveat though, if you will do the work. So you're going to hear this from me over and over and over again. If you will do the work, okay, if you'll do what I, ex I mean, tell you today, you're going to get results. So if you want the proven Twitter marketing plan to give you more traffic to your website leads and sales, let's just type in like a little bit, oh yeah, in the question box. We're going to have fun today, guys. So let's see what we have here. Um, I want to even see how you guys are going to even spell that, my friends. So Joan's like, yes, we're good. We have a hell yes and a oh yeah from Taylor. Awesome. Okay, guys. Here's the cool thing. If you guys can spend 30 minutes a day and implement the three simple steps, you're going to grow your list. You're going to become the rock star in your industry. And like I showed you, you're going to be seen by hundreds of thousands of people every single week. And you're going to start attracting these paying clients. So let's get started. So first off, we need to understand Twitter has an incredible 316 million active users. Keyword here, act active, right? Active, they're engaged. And then you also have to understand that there's more than 500 million tweets that are sent daily. Now, here's the cool thing that may, maybe you probably don't know is 80% of the active users are on a mobile device. Now, what does this mean that they're on a mobile device? If you ever study anything about mobile marketing, you understand that those who are searching for solutions on mobile, they're more apt to buy, right? So if they're looking for Twitter marketing, our Twitter marketing expert on mobile, like they're looking for a solution. I mean, the stat I believe is it used to be like 90% of those that um, are searching on a mobile lead to an action, right? So this is a cool thing for you guys to understand. Now, the other thing that you need to understand, if you're going to be serious about using Twitter to drive traffic, well, then your website, your platform better be pretty mobile friendly if you're driving traffic because they're on their phone to your site. So keep that in mind. Now, Twitter's changed the game, my friends, because it has this reputation of being an online newsroom, but that is no longer the case here, okay? People thought, well, it's just this newsroom. We go, we find news articles, we chat with friends, and we discover funny pictures. Now, why is that? It's also become a very, very good tool for businesses to engage and drive meaningful results. Their mission statement says, to give everyone the power to create and share ideas and information instantly, and this is my favorite part of this, without barriers, okay? Now, if you guys have been on Facebook and you've been on social for a while, you've probably seen your organic reach just tank, right? I mean, pretty much if we're going to get reach on Facebook, we have to pay to play these days, and there's nothing wrong with paying to play, by the way. I am not saying there's there's something wrong with paying to play. I'm just painting the reality here. You have to pay to play if you want to get lots of reach on Facebook. Now, Twitter says, hey, guys, we want to give you a platform to be able to share your ideas and share your information without barriers. And they give you guys the ways to do this with images. You guys can create 30-second videos. And now you can even stream videos in real time with their newest app that they purchased called Periscope which I don't have enough time to get in today talking about Periscope. That could be a total training all on its own. Now, I'm going to do my best, guys, to share as much value as I can in the next 45 minutes or so. And for those of you who want to learn more, I'm going to share how we can do that at the end. So let's get into the three steps here. There's three steps, power, plan, and promotion. That's all you need to know, power, plan, and promotion. If you guys have this workbook, you can be following and filling in the blanks. Um, if you don't have the workbook, it's there in the chat box. I'll go ahead and type it in the chat just to double check for you guys. So if somebody came on late here, it'd be relevant, okay? So let's look at this. What do I mean by power? 
So power is this idea. This is your ability to show up with 100% clarity, confidence, and certainty to use the platform. Because the reality is anybody can sign up for a Twitter account and start tweeting, yet only a select few have built a large Twitter following, right? They're generating the traffic, they're generating the leads, and they're generating the sales. Now, currently, like I told you, I have over 21,000 targeted followers on Twitter. I mean, they're very targeted, and I have never spent a penny on advertising. I've done it all within 30 minutes a day of consistent work. So once you learn to be at the place of power, you're going to be able to cut through the noise, and you're going to be able to do the exact same thing. The second piece of this is plan, okay? Getting results with Twitter is much like getting results in your body. Now, I know you're like probably thinking like, what are we talking about? We're talking about social media. Now we're talking about our bodies. What's, what's the correlation here? Here's the correlation. If you want to lose weight or if you want to tone up, you have to have the plan. I mean, you cannot simply just walk into the gym whenever you feel inspired to and randomly select the machines to exercise on. If you do that, you're not going to hit your goals, okay? And the other thing is, if you want to get results in your body, you have to show up consistently every day, you know, put in that 30 minutes of work every single day, and if so, then you're going to start seeing the results. Twitter is the exact same way, and I'm going to show you the exact plan by the end of this training. Now, here's the third piece of this. Promotion, okay? Promotion, promotion, promotion. You guys can have the best Twitter profile. We're going to talk about how to set that up. You guys can be creating the best tweets in the world. I'm going to teach you a strategy today to have the content calendar. But if you do not learn how to actually promote your account correctly, we're going to talk about how to do this organically today. No one's ever going to know you exist. Now, sure, some of them is going to find your content, right? But it's going to take forever to start seeing results. It's ultimately going to feel like pouring molasses out of a jar in the midst of an Alaskan winter not going to get going too fast. So I'm going to deliver some strategies today to help you see results within the next 48 hours. And I mean that, 48 hours, guys. You do what I tell you, you're going to see results here on Twitter. So let's break it down, um, the three steps. So the first stage is power, right? So how do we get to this place of power? Well, here on the screen, guys, you're going to see my uh, screenshot of my Twitter account from today. So the first piece of this is you have to have a rock and profile picture, okay? So what I've learned, and I've tested this multiple times, okay, have a personal profile picture on Twitter. And I'm going to talk about how this is applicable if you're, you're building out a company. But we live in a day and age where we want to do business with people, okay? So have that. People want to connect with the human beings behind the companies. They don't want to connect with a logo. Like we're all sick and tired of the, the corporate uh, you know, Fortune 500 companies and the media forcing things down our throat that we don't like. And we're like, gosh, can I just connect to a human being? I, that's what I want. So do that. I'm going to teach you a strategy to promote your account. And you're going to have higher click-through rates to your website. You're going to have higher engagement. You're going to ultimately increase and grow your list. And I know this sounds crazy, guys, by just having a personal profile picture. Now, the images, the image size is 400 pixels by 400 pixels. That's what you want to create. So it's nice and clean and crisp, okay? So when it shrinks it, it's not 400 by 400, but just create the thing a square, 400 by 400. Other thing to notice, right? Just do a three quarter shot of yourself, look directly into the lens. And guys, this camera, I mean, this photo that you're seeing here on the screen was done with my iPhone. You know, I'm not telling you to go spend thousands of dollars on professional headshots. Use your iPhone, just be aware of lighting, and let people see into your eyes. There's a reason for this, and I'm going to paint the second step here. I'm going to tie it all together for you. Second piece that you want is to have a rock and bio, okay? So how do we have a rock and bio? Have three to four words that describe you as a human being in life and in business, okay? So you're going to see Twitter rock star, coach, consultant, speaker, and former rock star. These are all words that sum up who I am as a human being. So if you're a mom, if you're a dad, if you love dogs, if you're a Weimaraner owner, whatever it is, just combine three to four words that describe you in life and in business. Again, because we want to connect with people. Now, the last piece of this, which is uber crucial for increasing your click-through rate to your website, is having what I call a power statement. Now, our power statement is nothing more than saying, I help X, which is your target audience, get Y, which is the results. Do not make this sexy. Do not make this clever. Just keep it ridiculously simple. The more simple you can, you can keep it, 
the better it's going to convert to say, I help these types of people or this person get this result. Like super simple. So if this was Jeff here on Twitter, you know, he may say, I help entrepreneurs, you know, uh, with content marketing. I help entrepreneurs get more traffic with content marketing. I help entrepreneurs create content very simply. It's like, oh, awesome. Well, let's see how he does that. And then they're going to click here on your URL. Okay. So that's what you need to have. Now, the other thing of this is on your URL, you better be able to have some type of opt-in offer, right? Or a lead magnet where you're giving them a report, you're giving a video series. You know, I know you hang with Jeff, so you understand the concepts I'm talking about. But if you're going to connect with humans, the, the, the target market, and we're going to get into how to do that. And they're like, oh man, who is this person that followed me? Or who's this person that published this tweet? They click on your profile, they come here and they're like, oh, well, Look at this interesting, nice human being. They look very trustworthy, right? I feel like I can trust them. I feel like I can respect them. Awesome. Now they're going to read the bio and they're like, oh, this person's interesting. Oh, he helps this person do that. Oh, that's me. I would like to have that result. Boom. Click through to the website. And now all of this that we just, we just talked about is happening in milliseconds, right? People are like, boom. They pick up on who you are as a human being via the image. They're going to be like, oh, they help me get this result, boom, they're gonna click and then ultimately you're getting the traffic. Now the third piece of this is you need to have a cover photo. And I'm gonna show some examples of good examples on all of this and some bad examples. I just wanna paint the picture here of setting up our account for success. We're at a place of power. Now in order to design your Twitter cover photo, do 3000 pixels wide by 1000 pixels tall. Now if you go online, and go to Twitter's website and you, and you search it, they're gonna tell you do 1500 by 500. Do not do that, okay? My experience more times than not, when you do that, your image is pixelated and blurry and um, it looks amateur. So make sure you just over design it. 3,000 pixels wide, 1,000 pixels tall. If you do that, it's gonna look clean and crisp just like you're seeing here. Now, what goes on this? Understand that this is pretty much a virtual billboard, okay? People pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars a month here in Dallas to have billboards right outside my door on Highway 635 on Lyndon B. Johnson Freeway, okay? Because they're getting impressions, right? And they're advertising their company on that billboard. This is the same way, my friends. You're going to be having hundreds of thousands of impressions, just like I showed you that, I'm, you know, that I got. I'm showing you how you're gonna be able to do that here today. Like, so make sure you're using this as your virtual billboard. OK, so this can establish you as authority. So if you've ever been featured on any type of media at any point in your life, put that right. I've been featured in CNN um, just this past year is featured in Business Insider. So I'm going to use these logos for the rest of my business career for authority and positioning within the marketplace. OK, you guys, if you've been on the same stuff, do that. Use these logos if you have been on the media, if you have an opt in offer use that. If you want to use your image of yourself here, you could do that. We're going to show you some examples here, but the main gist of this that I want you to understand is use this as a virtual billboard to establish you, my friend, as the authority, as the rock star, because people think, you know, we grew up like this thinking, well, don't judge books by their covers, right? We, we heard this from our grandparents or moms and dads, don't judge a book by its cover. But here's the reality in business and especially in this online community. We're judged by our covers, okay? So we can play like we're holier than thou and too spiritual to not buy into it, but I'm telling you, if you want to play the game, you wanna get into the game and play, that's the game. So learn to package yourself. One of the hugest lessons that I learned in music was packaging um, our band. Like we went from playing you know, on stages where we just wore whatever we wanted to wear to ultimately having some advice from a record label executive that said, guys, you need to have outfits that you wear every single time you're on stage, the same outfit every single time. So we organized the outfits. Everybody wore black except the lead singer. He wore black skinnies and a white V-neck. And when we did that, we walked into a record label showcase. Everybody in the room when we walked in together was like, who are these guys? Are they professionals? Oh, man, I bet they're really good. Right. Like we totally had this perceived image. And then ultimately, when we got on stage and we delivered an amazing performance, everybody was blown away because we matched their expectation. So when it comes to your online branding here on Twitter and this lesson kind of carries on to any types of social or online branding, package yourself as the authority. So I feel like I'm beating a dead horse. So let's show some examples of what not to do here. So here's Damien Fullerton. I don't know Damien and you know, one day I'm sure he's probably gonna be on one of these webinars and he's like, stop using me as the bad example. 
well, hopefully one day he'll like fix this. So we can see that he has this nice personal profile picture, right? He has a really good following and his following continues to grow. But he has like, if we look at his bio, I have no clue what he does. Marketing, networking, thoughts on the sale, business, social media, and Seattle's monorail. That's so scattered for me. I have no clue how Damien can help me, okay? Now he says, leading social selling revolution at, and he gives a Twitter handle, and then he has this really weird URL, sosado.com slash question mark C equals Damien. Like, I don't even want to click on that because I'm like, man, what is that going to take me? Is it going to like give me a virus or something? Now, I'm not saying Damien's a bad guy. Don't get that impression. I'm just telling if he wanted to increase his click-through rates, there's a couple of things that he could do here, and I wanted to give you guys a bad example. So he just needs three to four words that describe him, and then who does he help at Sosado app? And say, I help X at Y at Sosado app, and then can he clean up this URL so it's just sosado.com. So again, I'm like, oh, this Damien, I can connect with Damien. Oh, this he can help me here. Boom, I click, I go there, right? Make sure you don't make the mistake that Damien's making here. Here's another mistake. So this is Pixador. I've never met Pixador. Um, they're a web design company. Now they have a, a logo as their brand, okay? I, I don't recommend this. If you And I've tested this with Nick Unsworth and Life on Fire. We ran Nick's um, personal account. I ran his business account. We were publishing the same types of content. We're executing the same promotional strategies, which we're going to get into today. And ultimately, Nick's account, the personal account, grew like wildflower. I mean, I mean, fire. We went up to 10,000 followers very, very fast. And then the business account, it just slowly, slowly started because everybody wanted to connect with Nick. They didn't want to connect with the Life on Fire brand. They wanted to connect with Nick and the human being behind the company. So I, if I was consulting Pixador here and, you know, they're a company, then I would say, guys, um, can we – picture your CEO, like can we put his face on here? Can we put like one of your top sales guy, somebody that's going to be the face of the company here so people can connect with the human being and get into conversations with this individual that we can then convert into sell. I'm gonna show you guys how we can convert that into sell a little bit. The other thing that they did wrong here is if we look into their bio, right? Web design and development, um, search engine optimization, search engine management, social media marketing, digital marketing. Now, there's 50 other thousand companies that can do that. So why in the world would I choose to work with this company, right? Why in the world would I want, even want to click on their link? Now, if they got more specific and they could still say, you know, we're a web design company and we, you know, we're SEO junkies and, you know, SMM junkies, et cetera. And they said, I help social media experts um, get more traffic through SEO. I would be like, oh man, that's that's me. Well, I wonder what they got going on. Boom, I'm gonna click on the link, come to their pixador.in since that's India, right? And then if they had an opt-in that's congruent, this is another key here. Make sure your opt-in is congruent with your power statement. If it's not congruent, then it's not gonna convert. You're, you're gonna increase your bounce rate. So make sure that your power statement is congruent with your opt-in offer, okay? So if they had an opt-in offer, it's like 10 ways for social media experts to increase their traffic through SEO, I'd be like, hmm, let me see what they got going on. I'd enter my name and information, boom, they captured a lead, right? So make sure if you're a company that you're using the personal profile picture, you're following my advice by creating that rocking bio. This is fine, right? Their, their cover photo is very professional, very well done, good stuff. Now let's look at some good examples here, my friends. So here's my good friend Tyson Webb. Tyson Webb runs uh, the Go For It podcast. If you look at him, he has a, a nice picture of himself. He's a nice guy. And in his bio, voice actor, podcast consultant. He's a broadcast professional. He's a DJ on one of the, the radio stations there. He's done it for many, many years. And then his power statement, I teach my clients to design, launch, and market a quality podcast to give them a voice in a loud world. Now, if I wanted to start a podcast, I came across Tyson and I was like, man, I wonder what he has going on. Boom, I'm going to click on Go For It Show. I'm going to come into a conversation potentially with Tyson, okay? So just look at what he's doing here. He's positioned himself as authority using great graphics. Um, you know, he has my homie uh, John Lee Dumas and some other people here in the, the podcasting industry um, on his show, the, the professional um, profile, personal profile picture, and then that rocking bio. So great job on Tyson. Follow Tyson's advice here. Um, let's look at another example. So here's my good friend, Sue Zimmerman. Okay, Sue's the Instagram expert. If you ever want to learn anything about Instagram, Sue is a great person to follow. Now, Sue, is her personality is big, it's bright, 
it's colorful, right? If you've ever went on Instagram, followed her, you're going to see that. And her whole brand is about the nautical vibe because she lives on the Cape there in Boston, okay? So you're going to see here, you have the boats, you have the ropes, you have beautiful bright colors, bold personality, like this represents Sue. If you ever go to her website, you're going to find these same types of images, okay? So this would be another way to position yourself as the expert just by using great lifestyle photos. Lifestyle photos are genius for positioning yourself as the expert because we grew up and were conditioned watching television here in America, right? And now even in reality television that we're seeing these people on television. So we're like, oh, they're famous, quote unquote famous. So therefore, if they're on television, this is all subconscious, by the way, that means they must be wealthy or rich. It doesn't mean they are, but it just means in our mind we're thinking they are. So therefore, we give clout, we give credibility to a lifestyle. So take advantage of that um, piece of influence that you can have here on social by using lifestyle images. The great news here, guys, you know, I know Sue hired a photographer to take this picture, great lighting and everything. You guys can find college students. And I did this when we were touring and I would just offer to go buy them dinner. And, you know, I'd buy them a beer if I needed to. And sometimes, most of the times, they just actually wanted work to build their portfolio so they could actually get a job. All college students need to build a portfolio of work. So you guys can go to your local art school, find great photographers, and they're going to take like 500 pictures that you can use. It's genius. Now, here's another example. Sandy Krakowski, right? So if we break down her cover photo here, she uses some words a little bit different. Like I said, I want to give you guys some, some food for thought. So social media, culture, she used her media logos. She uses her hashtag for Be More for one of the marketing campaigns that she's promoting. And if you guys go to her account um, today, her cover photo is different, okay? Again, these are billboards. So this is when she was promoting her book, and she said, hey, I'm more at her site. So she's using this as that billboard. So people are like, oh, I want to go check that out, okay? She used this, what we call the hero shot, right, of her and herself. Great photography, um, positioning herself as the rock star, my friends, okay? Now, this picture on the screen, my friends, is one of my totally random weird faces, completely random totally irrelevant, but now that I have your attention again, let's get into the second stage. So the second stage is plan. Now, in order to have a solid plan, there's going to be four parts of the puzzle. The first piece of this is to focus on relationship building. Now, if you have a worksheet, this is what you want to write down. Focus on relationship building. Understand this about Twitter. Relationships are everything, right? And even in the offline world, the relationships, they will either make your business or they're going to break your business. I mean, just think of the experience here today. I'm here with you today because I established a relationship with Jeff. We had a couple of phone calls, you know, that we talked about church. We talked about life. We talked about Atlanta. We talked about Dallas. We just became friends. And I was introduced through Jeff, through a mutual friend, Roberto Candelaria. Some of you guys may know him, right? So it all comes down to relationships. Relationships are everything, and it's a huge, huge thing here when it comes to Twitter. Now, most people make the mistake of using Twitter as this one-way conversational tool, and it's not, okay? If you guys want results, you have to understand Twitter is a two-way street, and engagement is the name of the game. Now, the Twitter culture, it's pretty much like this huge networking party. Now, unlike Facebook, where, you know, if you send somebody a friend request, like if you didn't go to school with them, you, you know, you didn't meet that at an event, you just send them a friend request, maybe you send them a private message if you go a step further, and somebody's like, who is this person? Did we go to school together? Did I meet you? No? Then why are you sending me a friend request? Or you must be a creeper. Delete, right? And then you don't, you're not able to get into that conversation more oftentimes than not. Now, that's the culture of Facebook, okay? And understand that every single social media platform has its own culture. And that's why you shouldn't be posting the exact same things on every single social media platform because every single social media platform has a different culture. It'd be like, you know, we have some people here from Norway and I mean, not Norway, I'm sorry, the Netherlands. It'd be like me going to the Netherlands and let's pretend like nobody in the Netherlands talks English and they do, but let's pretend like they don't. And I go in there and I'm trying to communicate with English with everybody. And they're like, what? what? This person's weird, right? And then I'm like mad at them because it's not getting the result. I'm not able to communicate when ultimately I just need to abide by their culture and then talk their language. If we could do that, then we could start building relationships. So just keep that in mind. Now, Twitter is the complete opposite of Facebook, my friends. There's no barrier of entry. We talked about how there's no barrier of entry. Now, you can get into any conversation that you want to. So let me paint an analogy here. 
It's like going into a bar and walking up to the counter and ordering your drinks. And as you're ordering your drinks, I want you guys to be able to picture this image in your mind. As you're ordering your drinks, you overhear a group of people talking about Weimaraners. Okay, if you don't know what Weimaraners are, they're just a type of dog. They're like this gray, beautiful German dog. I use Weimaraners because I, I have one. I love Weims. Now, since you own Weimaraners, right, you're at the bar, you overhear people talking about Weimaraners, and since you own a Weimaraner, you go, you know, you get your drink from the bartender, and you walk over to the group, because you heard them over from the kind of out of earshot, and you say, guys, sorry to interrupt you, I was just ordering my drinks, and I overheard you guys talking about Weimaraners, and I guys, you know, me and my girlfriend, we happen to own one, so do you guys, if I just, do you mind if I join you in this conversation for a bit? What are these people going to say? They're going to be like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Come on to the conversation. We love having more people, you know, that have Weimaraners. How's your dog, right? And they're going to get into this conversation. And from that conversation, who knows what's going to unfold? Maybe it's just a great conversation. Maybe it's going to be clients. Maybe it's joint venture partners. Like you don't know until you get into the conversation with like-minded people, okay? This is the t culture of Twitter. Now, you also need to understand this about Twitter. You need to use your skill sets as a great conversationalist on Twitter. Remember I told you engagement is the name of the game. So do not be one of those sleazy spammers, okay? When somebody just follows you, you're like, hey, will you go like my Facebook page? Hey, will you go download my ebook? Hey, will you give me a review to my podcast? Like do not sell your stuff right off the bat. If you do it, it's not going to work, okay? If you have the automated direct messages, you know, where, I mean, uh, you know, somebody follows you and it's like, hey, let, thanks for following me. Um, let's connect on Facebook. Let's take it a, a step further. Like that worked like in 2009, 2010, not today. Like that's complete spamming. Like stop it if you're doing it. Completely freaking stop doing that. I need you to understand this. It's Twitter's kind of like picking up a really beautiful girl, right? And a really great girl. And you notice that I'm talking, you'll notice my language here. I said like a really beautiful, a really great girl, a great girl, a woman worthy of spending the rest of your life with. Now, you're not going to find this wonderful, beautiful girl that you want to spend the rest of your life with by trying to take her home immediately upon meeting her, okay? You have to woo her. You have to charm her. You have to seduce her. You have to build this relationship. Understand that great marketing and great social media is just like this. It is an art of seduction. Now, if you're still taking notes on your workbook, understand you need to be relentless, my friends, in connecting with people and creating genuine relationships. Now, the second piece of the puzzle here is share content that's going to add true value, okay? Your job is to solve your target market's needs, okay? So your Twitter account should become the hub for solutions in your industry or in uh, based upon your topic, okay? So this is why it's very crucial to take the time to really identify your target market. Now, once you have an understanding of what your followers want and what they need, then you can start delivering the content. What I mean by content is the tweets, okay? You start delivering the tweets. It's going to add value. It's going to improve their lives in some way. Now, this could be a tweet promoting maybe one of your eBooks. Like one of my eBooks is the seven deadly Twitter mistakes for business. Maybe it's promoting an article that you ran across. Maybe it's one of your blog posts. Maybe it's a link with information that's going to help your people out, right? It's going to help them solve a problem in the world. The whole point, my friends, is you are helping your followers solve the problems or you're helping them satisfy a need or answer a question, okay? That's all you need to understand. Now, here's the third piece of this. Engage with people. I can't stress this enough. Ask people what they're working on or ask them what do they have going on in the world? And I know this sounds strange, okay? But people like to talk about what they're up to. Now, I've experimented with this, and I've, I've tested this multiple times with different things, okay? When I first started out, and people would follow me, and you'll, you'll see this, and you've, if you're on Twitter, then you've experienced this. People will be like, thanks for following me, and you respond, you're welcome, or maybe you've been guilty of this before, and you're like, thanks for following me, and they respond, you're welcome, and that's the end of the conversation, right? It's just no different than going to a Christmas party with all of your family, and you have like your long-lost cousins that you haven't seen in like years, and you were childhood friends, and you're like, yo, dude, it's been so good to see you. I didn't expect you to be here. And they're like, yeah, man, I'm glad I'm, I'm here too. And you're like, well, what have you been up to? They're like, not much. And you're like, oh, okay, well, man, tell me tell me what, what, what you got going on, man. I haven't seen you in forever. And they're like, not much. 
And you're like, oh, oh, all right, you're strange. I, I'm going to go talk to some other family member that I can actually have a conversation with, right? Like, don't do that, okay? We want to have epic conversations with epic people. So be willing to be raw and be real and share amazing conversations, engage people. So here's how you can do this, okay? Anytime somebody like starts, they say, hey, thanks for following me, right? You can say, you're welcome, okay? And when I first started this, I said, you're welcome. How are things in your world? Now, when I asked this question, I found out that everything in their world was either good, fine, or wonderful, or amazing. Like, like people just like, I was like, how are things in your world? People are like, good, tweet. How are things in your world? Fine, tweet. I'm like, oh, gosh, okay. Like, no problems ever existed in their world. Now, as a marketer and a business owner, I was like, oh, I'm like, this is bad news, guys. Like, there's no problems. Everybody in the world's perfect. Everything is good. And I, this is bad, right? Because our job is to solve people's problems. It's what we do as marketers. We solve people's problems. And if the problems don't exist, well, we don't get paid because everything is fine and dandy. Now, I knew this was not the reality. Okay, so I changed my question. I learned this from Tony Robbins, that questions define what you're experiencing in life. Like the quality of your questions define the quality of the answers that you get, right? And I was like, all right, so let me change the question here. So then I said, when somebody said, hey, thanks for following me, I would respond, you're welcome. What's going on in your world? Or I would respond, you're welcome. What are you working on your in your world that's cool? Or you're welcome. <laughs> what is the coolest goal that you're looking to accomplish in the next 90 days? Now, this approach was golden because it opened up the floodgate to building relationships. Now, the reason is because if they chose to respond, they had to respond in depth, right? If they chose to, they had to actually respond. So if I ask them, what is the coolest thing you're working towards in the next 90 days? Maybe they're saying, I want to launch a podcast, okay? Right? And I found that about 85 to 90% of the people, they respond to a really good, engaging question. Now, here's the cool part of this, my friends, because I told you to help you get leads and clients from this. And this, this is where this comes in, this asking really great questions. Because based upon the question that you ask, if they say, I'm launching a podcast, guess what happens? You can ask another question, okay? Now, if you've ever studied anything about sales or if you've studied anything from Brian Tracy, then you know that the person asking the questions is in control of the conversation. Now, even though that the person asking the questions, they don't say much, they're guiding the conversation, right? They're guiding, they're finding that opportunity where they can say, oh, I can help you here. Or, oh, let me refer you to so-and-so. Or, oh, let me connect you with somebody, right? Now, here's the caveat to this. I don't ask these questions, and I'm not encouraging you to ask these questions because we're some type of sleazy sales guys, right? We ask the questions because we're genuinely interested in what's going on with the people. Now, there's several reasons to this. Number one, we're interested because we are qualifying these people to see if they are a good fit for what we have going on. Number two, we want to see how we can actually help and solve problems. Is it going to be us that can solve them? Is it going to be you that can solve them? Or do you know somebody that you can refer them to? Now, the other piece of this is if you can serve them, right? Don't, don't say, hey, man, I could totally help you out on that. Um, you want to become a client? Like, you can't, like, if you do that, you need to up your game on sales, my friends. Like instead, you may want to respond with, hey, man, um, I, I totally used to remember having the struggles as well. I created this free, this free guide to totally help you get X result, right? And then send them a bit.ly link or a link to your lead magnet, right? And then that way you're gathering a lead. And then if you have a good funnel, well, then they're going to convert into the phone call. Or if we get even simple, let's say you don't have a funnel and you're like, I don't even know what a funnel is, then just go old school sales tactics, my friend, right? And be like, dude, I totally remember um, being that um, that way as well. Hey, would you want to like, you know, hop on a quick Skype? I think I could help you get X result. And they're like, absolutely. And then you set up an appointment, okay? You exchange Skype uh, converse, I mean, Skype details. You can do this via direct message or you could do it via email. But all I'm getting at is you start asking questions. And if you find the rapport and you find a win-win for each other, then again, it comes to that art of seduction. Just sell them on the next step. The next step may be, let's have a conversation via email. Or the next step be maybe, hey, let's connect on Facebook and let's have a, a conversation via private message. And then you continue asking these deeper probing questions to ultimately find what do they want to, um, what outcome do they want? What obstacles do they have? What difference is it going to make in their lives? And ultimately, what importance is it going to result for them by having that? And then asking them, you know, and coaching them or giving them some solutions to that. If you do that, my friends, you're going to start selling stuff 
right here from Twitter. Now here's the fourth piece of this. You have to have a content calendar and be consistent. Now if you try this approach that I'm outlining here by tweeting, uh, you know, like nine times a day, which we're going to get into here on the content calendar, if you start tweeting and you start asking these questions and you set up your profile like I've taught you to and you quit within like 30 days or you quit within 14 days, you're going to fail, okay? I told you I'm going to keep it completely real with you guys, okay? So you have to understand, like just like I told you at the beginning, if you want the shredded body, okay, if you want it, you have to put in the consistent work. And more importantly, once you get the shredded body that you want, if you want to keep it, you have to continue doing the work. And like I said, 30 minutes a day, my friends, 30 minutes a day. So here's what I found. Tweet at least nine times a day, Monday through Sunday. Okay, that's what's working really good for me if you're just starting. Now, when I told you, you know, we're kind of painting the picture between Facebook here. If you do one post on Facebook a day, two posts on Facebook a day, and you're having lots of good reach, well, people commenting it and liking on it, then it's just going to continue staying in your followers' feeds, okay? Twitter's not that way. The average lifespan of a tweet's 18 minutes, okay? So literally, you could tweet 80 times a day if you wanted to, and you're still going to be okay, right? So let's don't even think about 80. Some of you are like, holy crap, 80? Are you kidding me? So let's just do nine, my friends. Nine times a day, Monday through Sunday, that's working really good. So I want you to create a strategy, though, my friends, that's based upon you, your voice, and your brand, and your topic. I want you to become the voice crying out in the desert, okay? I don't want you just to go out and start simply just retweeting people or just mentioning people. I want you to change up the types of tweets that you compose. Now, more importantly, right, the important piece of this is you need to create a spreadsheet for you to follow or a Word document, okay? Create a plan. And if you follow me on this, it's going to simplify your, your life and you're going to get results faster. And I hear some of you guys now, like the creative types, like myself, when I first started, I was like, a plan? Are you kidding me? I'm creative. I'll, I'll do this on the spot. I'll sit down, crank out nine tweets. And what I found out when I first got started, right, I got, I got pumped. I got excited to start using the platform. And then I sat down at my computer and there's this blank screen or I'm on Twitter and there's a blank screen or here on Hootsuite. And I'm like, crickets, what in the world do I say? Right? I didn't know what I was going to say nine times a day. So I had to find a solution, my friends. So I take out the guesswork, and this is why I'm telling you, take out the guesswork and create the plan. So what I did is I created a spreadsheet that broke down every day. Monday, leave nine blanks. Tuesday, leave nine blanks. Wednesday, nine blanks. Do the same thing for every day of the week, and then plug in what type of tweet that you need to create. So let's check this out. So let's say this is Monday, okay? You would be like, okay, I need to create nine tweets for Monday. We could do a promotion, right? Promoting your ebook, promoting whatever it is that you want to promote for your business. You're retweeting valuable content of the influencers you're in, in your industry. So you're, you're networking and you're also sharing their information to your uh, following, right? Because it's really good information. You want to be able to nurture and feed your sheep. Your followers are your sheep. You are their shepherd. You could do a quick tip. You could do an inspiration, right? It's like an inspirational quote, an inspirational video. You could do a third-party share where you're sharing like, you know, some really great news or somebody else's blog post. Maybe like I go out and I share Jeff's content from his blog. It's really good. You could do statistics in your industry. You could just ask questions, my friends. Just ask questions like, what is your favorite type of dog, right? I know this sounds crazy, but simple, my friends. People like, I asked the same question once, which was, hey, what's your favorite type of dog? And mine's a Weimariner. Like that was my tweet. And people were like, were texting, not texting me, they're tweeting me pictures of their dogs. It was crazy, which is great because it gave me lots of impressions, right? That one, uh, they, they're retweeting it, they're favoring it, it's getting me, me and my brand more and more reach to their audience, okay? Also, love, promote other people. Don't promote other people for invoking the law of reciprocity here. Promote people, number one, because you will invoke the law of reciprocity. I'm not going to tell you, you won't. But more importantly, it's because you actually believe in what they do. Like, remember, your following is your sheep. You are their shepherd. And you're like, oh man, Jeff has great content. I want to tweet some of his stuff and I want to promote him. And so I would do this, right? Jeff was active on Twitter. I'd be like, guys, if you want content marketing help, make sure you're following at, and I'd insert his Twitter handle and then boom, they're going to start following him, giving him some love. Okay. Just straight up, just no obligation, promote others in your industry. It's a great way for networking as well. The other thing is another promotion. Okay. So once you have this outline, this is the beauty of this. Once you have it in the spreadsheet, now you just have to sit down and do the work, my friends. You're just like, promote, what I want to promote, boom, promote. What I need to retweet, boom, retweet. What I want to do, a quick tip. Like whatever the spreadsheet says, 
Let it dictate what you're creating, right? This helps you be uber productive. I told you you could get done in 30 minutes a day. This is how. Create the plan, execute. Now on Tuesday, just reorganize the flow. Maybe you start off with a retweet. Maybe you, then you do promotion and a third party share and a statistic and then another promotion. Like you just mix it up so you're not tweeting out the same types of tweets every single day. Just mix up the order, my friends. Mix up the order, okay? And like I said, let the content calendar dictate your day. And I give everybody in Tweet Like a Rockstar um, um, a spreadsheet, like just the CSV file where all they get is just plug it in right in, okay? So I know for some of you, you're like, man, this seems like a lot of work. And I'm telling you, it's not. It's like 30 minutes a day, my friends. Once you learn the tools, the techniques, you guys can get this done. Just roll up your sleeves, hop on in there, start tweeting, start getting your profile set up, just start doing the work. Now, here's a ninja trick for you guys. Now, I use the Ninja Turtles here on the screen. If you guys are big Ninja Turtle fans here, if you guys can just give me like a, a big like woohoo in the chat box here, that would be awesome just because I'm a huge Ninja Turtles fan. It'd be cool to see how many Ninja Turtle fans do we have here in the house today. Let's see if we have anybody that's a Ninja Turtle fans come through. I'm just curious. Plus, it gives me a chance to get some water here. Awesome. So we have Candy. She's a Turtle fan. Awesome. So we at least have one. Candy, we're good. I like you even more now, okay? So Joan says comics, not comics, films. but not the films. Okay, Joan. Nice, nice. So let's check this out, Ninja Chip. So here's Hootsuite. I use Hootsuite to schedule out all of my. Uh, when I this is what I advise everybody to start using is Hootsuite if you're just kind of getting started. Um, as you get advanced, and I teach this also, I start using Post Planner. But if you're just getting started, just start using Hootsuite because it's a lot simpler. So here's the thing. When you log into Hootsuite, and you guys can use a free account to do this. You don't need to use the paid account for Hootsuite. Totally free. When you go into the settings here, you can see here I have the arrow and the circle here. Go into settings and you're going to see the auto schedule feature. Okay. When you come into the auto schedule feature and you click on auto schedule, this settings box pops up and you set it to schedule nine tweets a day. Set it between, um, here I have eight and seven, but for you guys starting out, I would do between like eight and five. That's pretty much the, the highest peak time here in the United States anyways, between 8 a.m., and pretty much 5, 6 p.m. It's like a bell curve because I've done some, some research with my audience. This is going to be different for your audience, and you can start using tools like Social Bro to really analyze this and start honing it in. But just in general, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., uh, 7, 5 p.m., somewhere in there, It's and that's going to be where you want to drop your tweets because you're going to get the most views. Select the days that you want the messages to be scheduled on, so make sure every day of the week is scheduled and then all you need to do is come into once you save it right we'll come back we're going to click save settings boom we click save settings now you come in and you're here in, in hootsuite you're like okay i'm going to compose tweet select your account type one i love being able to rock some live uh, marketing training uh, you drop in the link to the, the webinar if you wanted to or whatever you're promoting and two two hashtags don't use any more than two hashtags and we could get into the art and science of that i have a blog post on that but I don't want to take up too much time here because I want to get to your questions. And so just drop in that and then boom, auto schedule. That's going to auto schedule it out. Now, here's the cool thing about this. And this is why I shared this. And this is why it's a ninja trick. Hootsuite's auto schedule feature automatically will publish that tweet on that day. That's and, and that time that's going to get you the most eyeballs looking at your content. And this is why I say if you're just getting started, and you're like, well, when are the best times for me to tweet? Rather than having to think about it, let's just get started and auto schedule. So when you auto schedule, and let's say I, you know, we publish this tweet here. This is screenshots. So we're not going to publish this in real time. But let's say I auto schedule this. It would pick, let's say, 6 p.m. tonight, central time, right? And then maybe I, I do another one right after and I hit it. And then maybe it's going to be scheduled at, you know, let's say 4, 10 p.m., right? And it's like, well, why did it pick 6 for 1 and now it's picking 4? It's because it's picking and saying, guys, this one, this type of tweet's going to get this most exposure at this time. This one's going to get this most. So let's boom, 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 boom. So just auto schedule. So as we select nine times a day, so let's say if we just started right now, so here we are on Thursday, and let's say we have no tweets coming out, and I auto-scheduled, it would drop nine tweets, auto-scheduled them for Thursday, you know, before 7 p.m. or 6 p.m., whatever time signature we select there, so it's going to stack them, boom, 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 and the publisher, um, right here with this little airplane-looking arrow would be the publisher, you see them, boom, 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 once you have nine, you write nine more, you auto schedule them, it's going to roll them to that next day, which would be Friday since we're talking about right now. Boom, 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 boom. And once you have nine stacked up, you start writing nine more, and then it's going to stack them for Saturday and then to Sunday. So guys, you can batch 
your content. This is why I'm telling this is this is all integrated here, right? You have your content calendar. You've done the work of planning the types of tweets to come out. You don't have to think about this anymore. Just sit down and execute on what you've created, then come in and auto schedule all of this out, and boom, you have a week's worth of content scheduled out. Now all you have to do is focus on the engagement piece of the game, like I talked about, getting into the conversations. Engagement drives the results on Twitter, and if you're not engaging, you're missing out on huge revenue. You're missing out on huge amounts of traffic, so make sure engaging, okay? So this is the ninja trick that I wanted to share um, with you guys. So if you guys are receiving massive value right now, and you guys want to get to this third and final step, can you do me a huge favor and just type in, I'm here, just wanna make sure everybody's still here today, and we have lots of questions coming in, which we're gonna get into here in a little bit, but if you can just type in, I'm here, awesome. So Leslie, Joan, Donna, Dan, everybody's still here. Taylor and Roz, awesome, thank you guys for still being here. We so we're getting massive value, love it, I'm here, awesome. Sandor, Linda, Leslie, sweet. So let's look at the third piece of this game, my friends. And this is a random thing. Some of you guys may be thinking like, oh, I kind of feel like the little minion guy right now. Hang on, we're getting to the cool piece right here. So we're getting into promotion. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to play the follow game, okay? Now in 2013, this is the thing that drove results. So up to this point, we've talked about um, power, okay? How I'm hoping you cut through the noise through the profile setup. We talked about having a plan, we took out all of the guesswork, my friends. Like. Twitter is simple, okay? It's all about consistency and executing the plan here. This is why I told you the Twitter proven marketing plan. But this piece is like the rocket fuel to help you get going. In 2013, I asked myself a question. I said, okay, I don't have money to run ads. What can I do to reach my target market right now? This was the question. If you've ever studied anything from Tony Robbins or, or read The Wake and the Giant Within, you'll know that he, Tony talks about that the quality of the questions determines the quality of the answers. If you ask disempowering questions, then you're going to get disempowering answers. And on the flip side, if we're asking empowering questions, we're going to get empowering answers. So in 2013, when I didn't have the ad budget to spend money on paid ads, rather than saying, why am I a failure? Why, why can't I have an advertising budget? That's a choice. I could have said that. And then if I asked it, I would have had reasons to back that up, right? Because it's a universal law. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open. Like it will be given to you. So you have to be very careful what you're asking. So I said, what can I do to reach my target market right now? And the answer that came through was said, well, why don't you go follow the people who are following people who have a similar product or message like you? And I was like, man. That's simple. I wonder if it'll work, right? And so I did. I went out and I started following the people who are following Brendan Burchard, people who are following Tony Robbins, people who are following Amy Porterfield. And guess what? My following started growing, okay, like crazy. I started engaging these people in conversations, and that's how within that seven-day period, when I, you know, you remember this story at the beginning. I said I picked up my client. This is what made that possible. Because I followed some people that are following Brenton. They followed me back. They said, thanks for following. I said, hey, what are you working on in the world? And I'll never forget this. Her name was Melissa Mackey. And she said, man, I'm launching a coaching program. And I uh, I responded to her and I said, hey, that's 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 great. What's your biggest obstacle? And she says, I just don't know how to use you know the, the internet very well. And I said, hey, would you like to set up a Skype conversation? Um, I think I could help you. And she said, absolutely. We had a Skype conversation. And then at the end of that, she said, I want, I want, I want, she said, I feel I need to, to hire you, you know, how can we work together? And boom, that was the first client, right? The reason that happened is I proactively went out and got in front of my target market. So let's look at how we do that. So here's what, this is how it works, okay? First, I want you to make a list, and if you're following along on your worksheet, this is what you wanna write down. If you have a list, I want you to make a list, five speakers, top five authors, top five speakers, top five podcasters, top five thought leaders in your industry. Um, if you're a local business, in, or if there's associations within your industry, write even the top five associations in your industry. So just top five authors, speakers, podcasters, thought leaders, associations who have a similar message or a similar offering as you do, right? So I've already talked about the psychology of this is because we can assume if these people who are following these people on Twitter like their message, their product, their service, then there's probably a high probability that they're going to like ours as 
well, okay? So go, what I want you to do is, once you have the, them listed, go find these people on Twitter, okay? Just do a search for them on Twitter, go find these accounts on Twitter, and then write down their Twitter handles so you don't forget. Now I want you to spend four days a week, my friends, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, okay? I want you to spend three, I mean, four days a week following the people who are following those influencers. I want you to set a timer on your phone for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, set a timer on your phone, my friends, and follow as many people as you can that are following these influencers in your industry. Now, the criteria, my friend, is that they have a personal profile picture, they have a bio, they have a cover. If they have those three criteria, just hit the follow button. Just hit the follow button. However many people you can get in 15 minutes, you're good to go. Now, here's why. Because this gets you and your account and your message and everything that you're doing on Twitter proactively in front of your target market immediately, okay? Now, hear me on this. I'm not telling you to go spam people. I'm not telling you to go out and just follow uh, 5,000 people in a day. If you do that, it's not gonna work. Uh, you're probably going to get banned most likely and actually you really can't even follow that many people in a day anyway, okay? So don't do that. I'm telling you to go out and follow quality people. This is not a quantity game, my friends. This is quality, quality, quality. Okay. Now, once you go out and you follow people, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, four days a week, I want you to take off. This is why I said this is like a gym routine. Take off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from following. You're still going to be engaging. You're still going to be publishing their tweets, but don't follow anybody those three days of the week, uh, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then on that following Monday, I want you to use a tool called Manage Flitter, M-A-N-A-G-E Flitter, F. L, so F is in Frank, L-I-T-T-E-R.com. It's one of my favorite tools. And then it's, and you can use a free version to, to get started here. And then unfollow anybody who hasn't followed you back, right? That way you're only building an engaged community, my friends, an engaged community. So this, my friends, is the map for a Twitter marketing plan to get results. So let's recap real fast as we covered a lot of ground here. So we have the authentic profile image, we have a rocking bio, we're establishing the cover photo as the authority, we're tweeting nine times a day, right? We have the content calendar, we talked about using offline conversational strategies, we're playing the follow game, and then we have to understand that consistency, my friends, trumps perfection. So if you're gonna wait here and be like, oh, I'm gonna wait till figure out how to tweet, like stop, like just implement what I'm telling you, my friend, and just ship where you're at right now, do the best that you can and just level up and get better and better and better. Now, you'll remember at the beginning of the training that I mentioned, if you wanted to learn more about how to use Twitter to get results, that I would share how you could learn more. For some of you, you may feel like you could probably walk away right now and get results using Twitter, just implementing these three steps that we've gone over because we've got a lot of really good content. And for many of you, though, you're asking yourself questions like, well, how do I set up my Twitter account? Like, I, I get, like, what we need to do, but how do I do that? Some of you are asking, like, well, what are these types of tweets? How do I do that? Like, how do I craft this? How do I use images on Twitter? What metrics am I measuring to make sure I'm having success? You know, how do I actually analyze my audience so I make sure that I could reach them even better? You know, are there ways to automate things? Should I automate, you know, direct messages? Should I not automate things on Twitter like, oh, I don't know here. Some of you guys are like, well, how do I ultimately monetize my following once I built uh, my fan base here? Like, I totally get it. But I'm really ridiculously excited to uh, share with you guys Tweet Like a Rockstar because it's the solution to those types of questions. It's an on-demand digital training program that's going to help you use Twitter to get more traffic to your website, build your email list, become the authority in your industry network, and become friends with the movers and shakers, be invited onto podcasts and different stages, and be you know posting on different blogs, and to get into conversations with amazing potential customers and even make sales. Ultimately, my friends, this is the step-by-step -step online course to help you become a Twitter rock star. Now, we're going to have questions and answers. I'm going to share that special gift with one lucky person. That's coming, but I want to share the details of the course with you really, really quick. So what's included in the course? There are five easy-to-follow-along modules delivered to you via tutorial style through online video. There are worksheets for each module to keep you accountable as you go through the course. I told you I'm all about making sure you do the work, so I've designed that into. There's access to a members-only Facebook group. So I told you that you have accessibility. That's one of the things that makes me different. So as you're going through the course, if you have questions, 
ask. Like I, I, I respond immediately. I mean, you can see here, Zach, you know, he posted at 9.41 a.m. I'm responding to him by 9.54. I'm really good about responding to everybody, encouraging uh, people that's in a part of this group, okay? You're also going to have a collection or access to a collection of interviews with Twitter insights from uh, a lot of my friends that are social media experts and how they're actually using Twitter in their business. Now, the first module is all about getting started, okay? So you're going to learn how to rock Twitter, set up your account, choose your username, position yourself as the credible authority within your industry. The second module is all about creating that content strategy that converts, how to tweet, what to tweet, when to tweet, and how to use that third-party application to enhance in, in each tweet. The third module is all about the best techniques for attracting raving fans to increase the clicks to your website to build the email list. The fourth module is all about strategies to increase your impressions and your reach, like we talked about the hundreds of thousands of people, to create those new opportunities for your business, attracting new leads, how to support others who are aligning with your brand, and how do we actually interact via direct message. And module five is all about the tools to help you schedule your tweets, measure your success, automate engagement and directly make sales from Twitter. I take out all of the guesswork and tutorial uh, in the tutorial videos, they train you guys step by step. Now, some of the videos of me talking direct to camera, as you can see here on the screen, this is like me direct to camera, kind of helping you understand the concepts, but the majority of the videos are actually recordings of my computer screen showing you exactly what to do. It's just like you being here with me right now, um, you know, saying, hey, this is what we do, right? Now, I surveyed several of my peers and I was like, guys, what do I charge for this? I remember talking to Sue. I was like, Sue, what do I charge for this? And she was like, $697. And I was like, Sue, I am not charging $697 for this. Like I, I get there's enough value for that, but I remember what it was like not having a proven plan and really wanting one. So I was like, Sue, I'm only going to do this for $297, right? But since you guys run with Jeff, I want to do something really cool because I know each person that's here today, you guys have hearts of gold and you have a message to serve the world. So Everyone who purchases Tweet Like a Rockstar today, they actually can get it for $197. Now, this isn't all that I want to give you guys today. I also want to give you an all-access season pass to the Movement Marketing Summit. Now, the Movement Marketing Summit is a digital product about how to build and grow your online brand to grow the audience and make more money in your business. I went out and I interviewed 50 of the top entrepreneurs like Michael Port. Subi Zimmerman, Vivek Van Rosen, and many, many, many others on exactly what they're doing on and in their business. This is like the step-by-step -step guide to some of the best strategies in the industry. And so when you log in, you're gonna be taken into the dashboard here, as you're seeing here on the screen, and you're gonna receive a welcome video from me and my good friend, Andy Zitzman, and he was also my co-host for the summit. And once you're logged in, you're gonna have access to those 50 plus interviews with entrepreneurs like Roberto Candelario, where you can learn things about sponsors, where you're gonna uh, learn from Michael Port, Sue Zimmerman, like I said, so you can learn the best strategies. Now, one person who bought this, she said that I should have charged $699 for the summit, but it's gonna be yours absolutely free when you purchase Tweet Like a Rockstar this evening. And you're also going to have my 30 day money back guarantee. So here's what a few of the students have been saying about Tweet Like a Rockstar. So here's Nick Unsworth. He said the strategies added thousands of followers and it ultimately got more traffic to his website. Nick is the CEO of Life on Fire, huge uh, coaching company. Here's Willie Mack. He's a singer songwriter. Um, before he started working with me, he didn't even have a Twitter account. His band did, but he didn't. And so by implementing the strategies that we just outlined today, my friends, within 10 weeks, he grew his following from zero to over 10,000 people and he was blown away. And then one of my favorite case studies is my good friend Roberto, right? Jeff and I are both really good friends of Roberto. And Roberto called me one day and he's like, dude, what can you teach me in five minutes to make me money on Twitter? And Roberto has this targeted following about 8,000 people. And I said, dude, let's run this direct message campaign uh, strategy. And he's like, awesome. Took me five minutes to teach him. He executed in seven minutes and he made $2,000 once he had that because he had the audience there. Um, he was, uh, was with a webinar and also selling coaching. So let's just summarize this. When you purchase Tweet Like a Rockstar today, my friends, you're going to have access to five easy to follow along modules delivered to you via tutorial style, via online video, worksheets for each module to keep you accountable as you go through access to a members only Facebook group and collection of interviews with the Twitter insights from online experts, plus an all access pass to the Movement Marketing Summit, 
all for $197, guys. So you can see why most people who want to use Twitter to build an audience and increase their website traffic and grow their list with Twitter, they choose to work with me. Now, all you need to do is just go to ajamix.com slash Jeff, right? And make your payment. You're going to have instant access immediately. So, Jeff, dude, let's open up the lines for Q&A so we can answer some questions. I know they've been pouring in here in the questions box. And uh, we'll answer a couple and then we'll give away that gift. And then, dude, I'm here to continue answering questions here because I want to see people getting results, man. Awesome. Well, I'm busy typing in the uh, – the, um URL here in the chat, um, but I did see one question come in. What was that that you recommended to man manage Twitter? Oh, uh, yeah, what manage Flitter. So let me just type it in the chat box as manage well. Manage Flitter, did you say? Yes. Oh, oh, okay. No wonder I wrote it down wrong. Manage Flitter. So that's going to be that URL there in the chat box as well. Uh, manage awesome. Flitter. And I see, uh, so Dan saying, following, um, how many people on an average day is it okay to do? Dan, great question. So let me, let's go into the art and science of that a little bit. So the art and science is, let's say if you're brand new, okay, or if maybe you have a couple hundred followers or 100 or 80, right? You have 80 followers and maybe you're following 200 or something like that. Well, you can follow up to 2,000 people a day, and it's really around 1,886, so 1,886-ish. But once you get to 2,000, once you are following 2,000 people, then Twitter's algorithm kicks in, and you can only follow – 10% that are more than are following you. So let me let me paint some perspective here. So I have a Twitter following. I'm you know of 21,000 people. So I think it's 21,300. So I can only go follow 2,130. I guess would be what 10% of that. It would be whatever 10% of that. So a little over 2,100 people a day is all I'm allotted, right? Um, not even a day. It's just period. So what I do is I would break that up over that four-day time period. Okay. So for those of you who are starting out, to give you some, some numbers here, just go follow like 80. Go follow like 86 and, and change it up. My, you know, if you're using the 15 minutes a day, you're not really going to be able to quantify like one, two, three. How many of you do? Just do That's why I say timer for 15 minutes and however many you can get because every day you're going to be scrolling through the profiles. Um, there is a way to actually take the strategy from 15 minutes a day and actually use uh, Manage Flitter, actually, and I teach this within Tweet Like a Rockstar, and take that 15-minute time and cut it down into a minute using the software. It's still manual. Like, there is no way to automate that. Um, but that's – so I would say if you're just starting out, do like 60, 80, 70, four days a week. And then as you grow and your Twitter following is growing, you can bump it to 100, and you can bump it to 200 um, per day. So, Dan, I hope that answered your question, brother. Awesome. That's a good one. Henry has said or asked, if people follow you, won't they ban you if you post that often? Uh, nice. Times a day? Awesome. So it's a great question. So you have to understand that the Twitter platform is very different than the um, than Facebook, right? So I, I wish I could share my – I mean I could share my screen right now. But like the, tw the Twitter feed is going so fast. Like I don't even pay attention to my Twitter feed at, at all. I use lists to pay attention to who I want to pay attention to. I use the search algorithm to pay attention that I want to pay attention to. I never go into the feed because when I have, you know, 21,000 people following me, uh, my Twitter feed is just like every like 10 seconds, like 100 new tweets come in. Like this is like, like there's no way um, to keep up with it. So no, you're not going to um, uh, upset anybody. Nobody's like sitting there just eagle eye on their, their little Twitter feed there. I mean, they're looking and they're searching for hashtags. So you need to understand the culture here, right? So one of the analogies I like painting is that keywords are to Google as hashtags are to Twitter, okay? And also keywords are to Google as keywords in Twitter are to Twitter, right? And so people are searching. If they're searching social media and they search that, then the, the most recent tweet is going to show up in that search result. And then the, mo the next most recent, the next most recent. So that's how people are going to be consuming their content. Or like I said, they're using lists. So you're not going to upset anybody by tweeting nine times a day. By doing so, you're staying relevant because you're putting your content out into the news feed of Twitter, not your followers. I mean, it is in your followers, but more importantly, just in Twitter in general. So people who are looking for that content are finding you, your brand, and your message. So I hope that answers you, my friend. That is a good one. Thank you. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. It's one way up here. Another one from Henrice, full of questions today. I heard that we can now, or we can soon add more than 140 characters into the timeline. Awesome. 
So not not yet. Um, the only thing that you can do is in the direct message. They did eliminate the 140 character um, limit in the direct message, but not within your tweet. Okay. And then uh, lastly, I I just like the the honesty of this. I don't know how to have a conversation with people. Do you just type in at their name? Is that private between you and them? Does putting a period in front of their name make it public? This is where I struggle. Awesome. This is a. a Really good question, actually. Yeah. So, um, so if you just use her Twitter handle, right? You asked some really good technical stuff here. If you just use her Twitter handle, so like let's say at AJ Amix, and you're like, um, what was that thing you talked about on how many people to follow on your webinar? Like let's say you did at AJ Amix, what was that thing? You know, you asked me a question. How is that going to be show up? So one, number one, it's going to show up in my notifications, so I can respond to you. Okay. The other thing is anybody who's following you and it's also following me. Like any of our mutual fo followers will see that, okay? That's kind of how that works. Now, if you use the period, that does make it public where anybody um, and their mother can see that. So what I do is um, it just depends. I mean, I, I don't mind having the public conversations, right? So when it comes to I don't know how to have a conversation with people, do you just type in their at name? Um, I do a lot of times just having a conversation with that person and whoever wants to see it, see it. I'm not afraid about having that, co that conversation publicly. Um, because essentially I buy into the mentality if I'm at a networking event or I'm at an event, I'm talking to people, I'm speaking out loud, there are people around me that can hear that. And ultimately sometimes those conversations, when we're having a really passionate conversation, really engaging conversation, somebody comes up from me and they're like, dude, I overheard you talking about this with that person. You know, I want to talk to you about that. And then I'm able to have another conversation with another amazing individual because they overheard that conversation. So what I'm getting at is by having these public conversations on Twitter, by like, what are you looking at working at? And you're helping them and you're guiding them. That, my friends, is going to get you more impressions by allowing yourself to have these public um, conversations. That's how you're going to be able to get those hundreds and hundreds of thousands of reach and impressions. So hopefully that helps, Leslie. See, that's awesome because that's going an inch wide and several miles deep into a niche. And knowing those little things that make a huge difference, folks, you know, tiny hinges swing big doors. And so get all of this stuff. I mean, he shared with us great stuff to do. There's so much more at ajamix.com forward slash Jeff right there in your chat box. And also on the screen, you can click the link. Um, here is, I mean, if you can answer this question for Roz, you will spread happiness all the way to New York City. Um, she says, I tweet an hourly quote. It's one quote at the same time on the hour for 24 hours. For the month of September, I increased it to two quotes a half hour. I increased it to see if I could increase my engagement, it, but it's not really working. Twitter's very fast and tweeting so often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how do I get people to engage more and to follow and retweet? Awesome. So I'm, gonna, I'm reading her question so I understand it. So she's posting the same quote every hour for 24 hours. Um, so it could be, I'm just going to be completely honest with you, Roz. It could be a shitty quote, right? Now, the way I would do this, if you want to test the strategy, is why don't, if you're going to tweet a quote every single hour, then tweet out 24 quotes, right? She's saying a different quote. Oh, a different quote. Okay, cool. Yeah. So if it's a different quote, um, also, then use the analytics within Twitter to see um, like if you go in, this is kind of like nitty gritty technical, but this is this is some really cool stuff. If you go and set up your ad account, my friends, and it's free, just go ahead and set it up, put in your credit card, et cetera. Don't spend any money. Once you do that, you have analytics within Twitter. And what I mean by that is once you have these, you can start analyzing the tweet. And below it, you have like a little uh, a bar graph and you click it, it'll give you stats and it'll show you how many retweets, how many favorites, and how many clicks that that specific tweet has. So if I was running the strategy with you, Roz, I would have you look at the data because the data never lies. So I would say, let's monitor. And then this happens very fast. This is beautiful. So like the next day, you can monitor every single one of those quotes that you did for the day before and see what tweet, what type of quote was getting the most retweets and most favorites. More importantly, in my opinion, more than anything is the most clicks. OK. And once you know that, then you're like, OK, let me share more types of this message because every quote's different. So let's find what your audience really wants and then share more of that. Once you know that data, then you can do that. And then you said you increased it to two quotes. So I see you're publishing content and you're thinking of it this on, on this one-way uh, ticket, right? You're doing a one-way conversation, which I talked about not doing. So I would encourage you to cut down the amount of tweets that you're pushing out and let's say, let's go to nine and drop nine quotes uh, just between 
8 and let's say um, uh, whatever 9 hours from 8 is, sorry, I can't think of math, uh, whatever that is, uh, whatever it is, right? Whatever, just do 9 hours or just do 9 uh, quotes for the day and then spend the rest of your time engaging with people who have favorited that tweet. And this is how, you, again, this skyrockets the, your, um, your engagement. When anybody favorites it, you just check your notifications in Twitter and you can be like, hey, thanks for favoring that tweet. What did you like about it? Right? Opening up the gateway to a conversation. Or if they retweet it, thanks for sharing it. What made you share that, qu that quote? And maybe like, oh, it's one of my favorite quotes. It's always inspired me during a dark time. I don't know, whatever they're going to say. But again, it opens up your conversation. So if you're looking to get more reach, my friend, Roz, get into those engaging. So cut down on the one-way conversations and then get into um, responding to anybody who's favored you, retweeted you, et cetera. So hopefully that helps. Love it. Thank you, AJ. Now, Linda, hey, Linda, how you doing? Um, is asking a good question. And I think it represents a lot of people. If the Twitter feed is going fast, how do we engage yeah. with followers? Awesome. I, I love these questions because, you know, and Jeff, you, 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 I know you've experienced this, but like you're in your head so much. You're like, oh, man, I've never even thought to address that. So this is a beautiful question, Linda. Thank you. It is. I use the notifications. So I, in, in Twitter, you, in the, if you log in, you have your home, which is your Twitter feed. You have a notification tab. So this is all at the top. Um, so just click on your notifications tab, and then everything uh, that's noted, I mean, all of your engagement is right there. Everybody that's favorited you, there. Anytime you've been added to a list, it's there. Anytime somebody's retweeted you, it's there. Anytime somebody's, you know, gave you an at uh, reply, it's there. And so what I do is usually, uh, when I first started this, now my assistant takes care of this, but when I first started this, I would just, every morning, this was part of my plan, 15 minutes a day, follow the people. Boom, 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 boom. 15 minutes more of a day, just respond to all notifications that came in. And uh, I would start, you know, 24 hours, like, oh, this is where I left off yesterday. Respond to all the ones that I could to the current time in the day from 24 hours ago. Move on about my day, and the next morning, do the exact same thing. 15 minutes a day, play the file game, 15 minutes, respond to everybody, and that became my routine, 30 minutes a day, and that's how you keep up with engaging with your followers. I like that. Now, um, where did that question go? I know this to be true, and, and you guys know this to be true on Facebook. Um, you know, you're going to get more uh, people reading your stuff if you include an image. Um, is that also true now on Twitter? Awesome. AJ, to have a, a photo with your tweets? Yeah, great, 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 great. Yes, actually, and I, pub I published a blog post on this. Um, it actually increases your engagement rate by like 50%. Uh, no, I think it was 150% by using an image. Big time increase in engagement by using a really good um, image with it. But there's a slight little caveat to this as well, okay? Because with um, within Twitter, when you publish an image, right, so I need you to kind of visualize this a little bit. And for those of you who aren't active users, this is going to be a little confusing. But for this answering this, it's going to be really good. If you do your headline, you do your link, and then you do your hashtags, and you add the, you add the, 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 the image, well, there's also a link for the image. Now, when it publishes, it will show the image of your, um, that you've created plus the headline and your link, but there's two links within that tweet. There's one for the image, and then there's one for the link to your blog, okay? So there, this it does increase your engagement, right? The retweets, and it also increases the, the favorites big time, okay? But it will hurt your clicks at times because people are clicking, you know, maybe they're clicking the image link. They're like, oh, I'm gonna go off to the next one, rather than just clicking the link to your blog, right? So I, I, enter, I, I really don't use a lot of images. Now, if I'm doing inspirational quotes and, and stuff, like I, I consciously create visual content to get shared for the purpose of engagement, I, I use images. But if I'm promoting a blog post, man, I go straight back to like 1940, 1950 um, advertising using a great headline, a nice bit.ly link, and then two hashtags and keep it simple. And that way people who are searching for that content um, they're like, oh, that's exactly what I want. Not confusing. They click the one link, brings them to my blog. They can consume the content. They can opt into the list. So it is, you have to have that strategy between, okay, do I want to increase engagement with this or do I want to try to get clicks to the site? Thank you for that. AJ, you are truly an expert in this niche. I'm, I've got pages of notes here. And I can't wait till um, we talk next week. Now, folks, here's the bonus I'm going to give you for everybody that comes on board. Everybody that's already on board are smiling now because you didn't even know you're getting this bonus. Um, AJ and I are going to meet next week, and he's going to help me um, 
leverage this. I'm already in the course, so I'll be there with you. Um, but he's going to help me leverage this some more. We're going to do some stuff together. And what I'll do is I'll hold, um, I'll do an extra bonus webinar for you guys and just share what I learned um, awesome. from AJ awesome. and the results. Um, so that'll be your bonus for coming on board. Um, AJ, man, thank you for uh, just this is an awesome presentation. Really, really good stuff. Um, any, um, I almost said last words, any final <laughs> words and thoughts for the folks? Sure. Yeah, just the only thing that I can, I can emphasize, I mean, I, I can't emphasize this more, is like don't worry about having everything perfect. Like, just right. ship it. Like just tweet nine times a day. Like just, just do it. Just do what you've learned here. Like go back and if you need to watch the recording. I mean, just set your account, do your profile picture, do your rocking bio, do your cover photo, create your plan, and then just ship the tweets, and then just level up as you go. If you'll do that, you guys are going to start getting results. And don't worry about like, well, am I asking the right question? If I'm not asking the question, like, use your intuition. I mean, when you walk in offline, you just genuinely connect with people, and you start asking these genuine convert. I mean, these questions because it's just coming from your gut, your instinct, your intuition. Do the exact same thing on Twitter, and if you do, like, it'll blow your mind how how, how fast the results come. I love it. I love it. Thank you, sir, and thank you all for being here. Lots of webinars every hour, every day nowadays, and you chose to be here. We always appreciate that. You want to go get this stuff at the link you see on the screen, ajamix.com forward slash Jeff. It's also there in your chat box to give you the convenience of just clicking upon the link, going over and getting the special, the bonuses, and uh, tweet like a rock star. Hey, so, and, uh, um, and sorry to cut you off, Jeff, but real fast, yeah. I need to give away that gift, my friend. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you um, for remembering that. Let me – so here's – let's do this. Let me – where are our – let's see here. I have uh, – da, 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 da. all right, let's do this. Um, let's do on a scale of 1 to 100. Um, type in a number there in the questions box, and the number closest to the number in my head, I'll grab one. And then I'll give you my email, and then you can shoot me an email. Just type in your question. Let's see. Okay. And we're going to give it like five seconds, five, four – Three, two, and one, and the winner is actually Taylor Silver Street. How about that? So Taylor, if you can just shoot me an email, I'm gonna type. I'm just gonna respond to your here. Type in answer aj at ajamix.com. Uh, send to you privately. So aj at ajamix.com. Taylor, if you can just shoot me an email there, um, I'll make sure I get that to you today. Awesome. Now I gotta read you the good stuff here. Um, this is great stuff. Thanks for sharing, says Dan. Cool webinar. Thanks, AJ, says Candy. Thank you. This was awesome. And Reese, Leslie, love you, AJ. Thanks, Jeff, for introducing us to him. You're welcome. Awesome. Great, AJ. Thanks, says Joan out in California. Thank you, AJ and Jeff, says Roz. Okay, so, yeah, thank you for remembering that. That's awesome. Um, link is on the screen. Link is in the chat. Uh, go get this stuff because it flat out works, and then go use this stuff because it flat out works. And we'll catch you next time. Thank you, AJ, and y'all take care. Bye, guys. Thank you so much, Jeff.